Well, hello, welcome back to our beautiful, beautiful platform where we are in partnership with Big Sis chatting to you, of course, our teenagers, our young teenage girls. Hopefully uh, our parents are listening in as well and joining in in this conversation. So, so exciting to have an AI bot dedicated to chatting to young girls all across the continent and indeed the world and giving them a space where they can feel safe to talk about issues that affect their sexual health, their desires, their mental health, everything else involved. Uh, being a young uh, girl out there is not easy but we certainly are recognizing you and we are here to say that we see you we're here to support you and in that effort i'm not here alone today i'm joined by dr sia who needs very little introduction he's a tiktok sensation medical doctor by profession but doing other incredible things dr sia hello welcome thank you for having me so so excited you're not gonna get by without giving a full intro so my name is Sia Mac. I go by Dr. Sia on social media. Mm -hmm. I'm a medical doctor and a multi-award winning content creator. Multi-award winning. Let's say that again. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, on social media, I've taken the responsibility to simplify and demystify mm -hmm. sexual and reproductive health. Um, so far, I think we have one of the biggest social media platforms for sex education with more than three and a half million followers. Wow. And uh, it's been a very rewarding experience empowering people with their sexual health. Well, that's phenomenal to think that you're impacting 3 million lives at a time. And that's not counting the number of reshares and the people that are, don't actually jump onto your page, but view it and on other platforms. That is just phenomenal. So a big, big thank you to you for all the work that you do. And you're here today to speak um, to us specifically about mental health. Yes. Um, and how this is a conversation that's important, especially pertaining to the girl child, um, and also how we can sort of demystify, like you do so well, um, the, the issues around mental health. I want to start with the question of um, what are the simple things that we can do to take care of yourself and your mental health? Okay, so some of the main ones that you can do that everybody should do that will help your physical and mental health is exercise. Mm. Exercise raises the endorphins that improves your mood and it's proven scientifically to improve some symptoms of depression, for example. Okay. A healthy diet, that's also very important. Another one which is probably more important than the other two is adequate sleep. Mm. Sleeping, so for, depends on your age group. So if you are like a teenager, you have to sleep certain amount of hours. If you're an adult, like around eight hours, sleeping, less than the amount that you are supposed to increase your risk of mental health illnesses like depression and anxiety. Mm. Um, if you want to go more specific for your mental health, I would advise simple thing can do meditate, mm. you can do journaling, you can put boundaries, uh, you can focus on what can you what you can control, uh, breathing exercises. Mm. So it's all like simple thing that somebody can do to whenever you go through a tough time so you can take care of yourself. I love the journaling um, because I think um, young girls specifically uh, shy away from maybe having open discussions about things that are bothering them. And um, I, I know when I was a teenager, I used I had a pink diary that had a lock that I'm sure my mom picked open a couple of times. And <laughs> I'd write, dear diary, and I was able to express everything that I was feeling and thinking. I'd be able to write a letter to myself. Um, and, I, and I guess that uh, promotes a sort of sense of being kind to myself in a way. Yes. And it's also like kind of you venting mm. to yourself and talking about being shy to do like to speak to someone mm. or anything um <clears throat> as you mentioned earlier big sis is a whatsapp chatbot that provides you with a non-judgmental which is very important oh. environment uh that you can chat and it's private it's safe mm. as mo most importantly it's free mm. uh, which uh, you can get tips on how to deal or what, what things you can do to improve your mental health. Um, that would be one of my like, first advice to do, to just educate yourself because knowledge is power after all. Absolutely, because I mean, they, they, we all seem to think we understand mental health and the different layers to it. Um, but I think because we all have such different lived experiences, we don't know how to tackle it in the same way. Um, for instance, um, I was reading uh, the World Health Organization stats the other day um, and at, if, if I'm coming from a poorer community where I'm living in a house with six other 
siblings or whatever it is mm. and i'm not really going to have time to chat to my mom and dad about how i'm feeling and my mom and dad have bigger problems like putting food on the table uh keeping the lights on when load shedding isn't happening and they're able to keep the lights on um some of some of the tools that are available to other children aren't necessarily available to me and you're saying the resource of big sis is a, is a yeah. it just sort of it's an equalizer yeah. Because we're always on our phones. We all have access to Facebook. We all have access to WhatsApp. Exactly. I mean, it's on WhatsApp. It's on Facebook. It's on Moya app. Um, it's easily accessible. It's very friendly. Mm. And it speaks the language. Of, it's like you're having your BFF, you know. For real? I had, like to, Google, I had to Google some years ago what BFF means because <laughs> it wasn't my generation. But it, it speaks that language mm. which uh, uh, teenagers can relate and feel comfortable to chat. Mm. I love that. Another common question around um, mental health is how do we cope with tough times? Like some practical things and how can I cope with tough times? So tough times are part of life. Mm -hmm. You know, they are there to make us stronger, to teach us. And sometimes, not sometimes, you need to admit that it is okay not to be okay. Mm -hmm. That is the first step of you acknowledging it. And as I mentioned, being vulnerable is a sign of his strength, not weakness. Love that. So going through tough times is about having strategies. And that's where tools like Big Sis come in, where it can give you tips and advice and guide you through such uh, times. Uh, strategies like meditation, um, taking breaks, uh, focusing on what you, what you can control, mm. that is very important. Having healthy boundaries, breathing exercises mm. is a very important one. And obviously the ones I mentioned, like if you can exercise, have a healthy diet and sleep, it gives you a stronger foundation for your mental health. Okay, I like those. I'm taking those tips for myself as much as I'm taking from my adolescent <laughs> child. Those are important tips. I think we take for granted some of the things that are easily available to us where it doesn't, it's not going to cost you anything to just exactly. take a moment and, and just be with yourself. You know what I mean? Um, can you share some um, coping strategies one can practice to deal with everyday issues? Let me give you a scenario. Okay. Um, I am 16 years old. I'm in the middle of uh, my um, exams. It's exam season at the moment. Um, I am feeling anxious about writing this last paper, but I'm feeling more anxious about the after exams parties that I'm going to go to with my friends. My boyfriend, we've been to first base, second base. He's likely going to push for a little bit extra. Um, how do I deal with the anxiety around that? And how do I prepare for that important conversation that I must have with him to say, look, I might not be ready. Okay, that's a very good question. Um, let's start with the question. Uh, how are you going to speak it? Speak to your partner about mm. be ready or not be ready? Mm. I think it's very important to have a suitable time when you talk about a partner, not in the middle of the exam, for example. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All these things are going through my mind at the same time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's very important. Communication is, we always underestimate power of communication. Mm. So communication is very important. Um, it must be done in a comfortable environment. Okay. You must be honest. Um, we mustn't communicate by blaming others mm. as i mentioned being honest um, and vulnerable is is the key mm. here um yeah so that is how i would advise to speak to the partner and how to deal with the whole of stress so you must just as i mentioned what can you control and what you cannot control mm. so whatever you can control you focus on that it reduces your stresses by like let's say 50 percent <laughs> and then Preparing your exam, making sure you read the... I'm, I'm giving study tips now. No, but. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> manage my time, read the study material. Taking breaks, make sure you sleep. Mm. I'm just going to divert. <clears throat> but studying and not sleeping, basically, it's, it's proven that whatever you study, it's not going to be stored. It's cancelling out. It's cancelling out. So I know it's stressful, but speaking to a friend mm. that can help you with the stress anxiety... Big sis is there. Mm. I'm not sure if everybody's allowed to be on their phone during exams, mm. but if you can, it will take a few minutes of looking up 
and big sis, mental health, how can deal with stress, mm. what are coping mechanisms that you can use few of them just before the exam, the breathing exercises, mm. they will all help you feel calmer. Mm. I love that. Thank you, Dr. Sia. Um, all right. Now there's the idea of seeking support and talking about how I'm feeling. Why is that important? So speaking out, it's kind of therapeutic. It's like healing. So when you speak out, you, get, you can get advice. Mm. You can get different perspective because sometimes you want an answer for your question. And then once you speak it, you're like, oh, I know the answer. <laughs> so, so that will help. Mm. And it's always important to have a support system, mm. whether it's your best friend, a family, a colleague. Um, if you don't want to speak to a person face to face, again, we're going to go back to Big Sis, mm. where it can give you tips and guidance on how to handle what you are going through. Mm. And it's a mission. It's okay not to be okay. You know, mm. we're not always happy jumping around there are mm. times that we feel down there are times that we feel up and if you really think you are struggling and you need serious help there are services that you can uh, get from big sis mm. there's phone numbers wherever you live um yeah okay i love all those answers and i think you mentioned being able to lean on family and friends um how, how do i make it I find it difficult to approach certain conversations with my family and friends. Is there a way around it? I mean, how do I have and discuss such issues of mental health and feeling sad and not feeling like I want to get out of bed? Very, very difficult question because there are different, each family is brought up in different way. And mm -hmm. I think one reason we have such a stigma about mental health is because parents are not taught about mental health. Mm -hmm. We are not taught schools. I'm not sure about now, but like my time, they were not teaching yeah. about mental health. So it's seen as a stigma in many families. And if you have mental health means mental health issues mean you're not strong enough, you're weak. And that's why we are having such conversation to educate the listeners or the viewers about importance of mental health. It is as important as your physical health. Mm. You can see someone on a cover of a magazine with six packs and the best body in the world mm. and then unfortunately you see them committing suicide sure. like a few months later so that's because we are told if you are have mental health issues you are a weak person mm. you want so to internalize it that's exactly that's um like this issue they say men don't cry for mm. example you know that's uh, mm. one of the reasons so it is very important to know that being vulnerable and talking about your mental health it is not a sign of weakness, mm. it is a sign of strength. And if you cannot get the help you need from your family, <laughs> I'm going to go back to Big Sis. Mm. And there's Big Sis, there are other services, there are hospitals, clinics, there are psychologists, psychiatrists, mm. you can get professional help, speak to someone. So don't sit at home and blame yourself, seek professional help. Mm. Yeah. Speaking art is a sign of strength. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Sia, for your time. And thank you for sharing on this very important conversation. Um, and I think given your wealth of experience and interacting with people all across the world, I'm going to ask you to leave like just a little thought, like a nugget. If uh, uh, there's a young girl listening out there and they're feeling, oh, OK, he spoke some bit to me. Anything that she can hold on to as she's going through her next. Just remember, you're not alone. Mm. Big Sis is one chat away love it literally one click away is big sis that is dr sia medical doctor mm -hmm. and of course going around the world literally changing um lives one conversation at a time three million lives he's touched for sure and a couple of hundred thousand lives he's touching through this conversation with all of you today uh, we're going to continue our great conversations on big six a uh, big sis rather and also just a reminder that you can find big sis uh, on uh, facebook messenger on whatsapp and even on the moya app uh, free of charge available 24 hours a day seven days a week your sister there to hold your hand through whatever you're going through as a young teen especially focusing on sexual health and reproductive health and of course loving yourself for exactly who you are you take care